So welcome back to another podcast. Now, I know you haven't already watched this video, but if you can, just get it out of the way and like the video now. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, hit the notification bell so you get notified when new videos are released. And comment below if you have anything you want to say about this video. So today's podcast, we uh, interviewed the guys from TaxiApp. Now, TaxiApp has changed. What it was before to what it is now is completely different. And from what we discussed here today, it was amazing. I really am impressed. I really think it's something that all of us should get behind. It's something that you should be on. So there's no longer the fee each month. It's commission-based, a 10% commission, which is super reasonable. So if you can get behind it, you will help at the very least create better competition, which will bring down the commission prices from other app providers and make it better for you. Or at the very best, create an exclusive app that's exclusively for taxi drivers that will only benefit the trade. So hope you enjoy this video. And as I said, like, subscribe and notify and comment. Enjoy. <laughs> Uh, what are we doing here today, Paul? Uh, we have the gentleman from Taxi App. Taxi App. Taxi App UK. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll go into a little bit of a story about how I was involved in Taxi App. Yeah. Uh, during the lockdown, uh, 2020, we're talking, you, yourself, Phil and Damon came to see me here. Yeah, correct. Um, and we were talking about doing a bit of promotion on, on our cabs. Mm -hmm. So putting... You know, liveries. The liveries on the cabs, taxi app, just helping with promoting the, the cooperative. And uh, I said, yeah, that'd be great. I was already a taxi app member. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew Damien before he was even involved in taxi app. And I said to him, I'm more than happy to help you push the app. And I knew that um, a few other fleets were involved as well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we just wanted to get it moving for, for sure. the trade, really. So I've got Ben and Phil. Ben, what's your surname? Just Ben Black. So I've got Ben Black and Phil. Verino. Phil Verino from Taxi App. Ben, you're an investor? Yes. And you're a new investor or you've been involved for a while? Yeah, no, I'm a new investor. Okay. We're, all, we're all new investors. That's the... Ah, so this is what I'm catching up on. So I'm a bit out of sync. Something has changed with Taxi App recently. And there's something I've been hearing about someone getting the ump about you stole the app and stuff like that. <laughs> is going on. Yeah, well, um, let, let, let me sort of jump in. So um, Taxi App is now Taxi App Partnership. Yep. It's completely greenfield, I suppose you would call it, um, venture. Um, sort of Ben sort of got in contact about a year ago, I believe. Yeah, it was interesting. I was in the I was in the city actually in the evening trying to get a taxi back, and I was trying everything. I tried Get and Free Now yeah. and Uber and everything. I mm. couldn't find anything. And eventually, I looked online. I said, "There's another app called Taxi App," and I downloaded it, and I got a taxi straight away. Right. And um, I was spe speaking to the driver. I said, this is strange. You know, this worked brilliantly. And he, he spoke to me, it was about 45 minutes to get home, and he spoke to me for 45 minutes saying, this app is great, the drivers own it. Um, and the problem is, it's not very good, it's had no investment. So um, that was, I was thinking, well, this could be brilliant. So I got in touch with the guys then, and, and here oh, we yeah, are. that's right, yeah. So like I said, about a year ago, I think you got in contact, we had a meeting, and it was very apparent that we both kind of had the same idea of what was needed. Yep. and what needed to be implemented. You know, it's one thing having an app, it's completely another thing having an app that's actually going to work and do what it says on the tin, because ultimately yeah. that's what we want. And so there's different components which are, you need investment, you need the right people, you need the right technology. And so together it, it just seemed to really click that we were both coming at it, you know, Yes, plus to make it work. you do need the drivers to use it. Of course, of course. So what's been preventing drivers from using it? I think it's, it's not one sort of situation that everyone's got a slightly different view on it. But, you know, what we've done now is give drivers 42% share. So as drivers work and do jobs, you get points. And eventually, you know, hopefully when there's a profit share, we're going to share those points as cash back to the drivers, which ultimately kind of reduce uh, yeah. the percentage that they're paying. So it's, it's, it's part of their company. I think it's probably worth taking a, a step back because... When I when I met the guys, they were very clear. They said if the they said drivers owning their own app is absolutely the right model. Yes, but we need in we need investment, and and we were sitting there thinking we're all massive fans of black cabs. What makes what makes London different? Um, you know, I've got young kids. I'm I wouldn't trust them anywhere else other than the black cab. They're all you yeah. know all over London, and we were sitting there saying, so what's preventing this? And it was cash. How do you you can't just build an app. These things are expensive. You need a, you know, to, to, to build a proper business. It's not about the app. It's about building a community. Yeah. You need great tech and you need professional managers who have done this before. And you don't do that 
with no money. You need to find a way to, yeah. to put enough investment in to build all that stuff. So that was the complicated thing. Yeah. And what was interesting at the start, it was very good. Martin and, and Phil, especially, who are the two we, we dealt with, were like, whatever you do, we'd love your money. We'd love to find a way to do this. And we can all go off and find professional managers to run it. But it cannot be Halo. Right? That was the, the thing they said from the start. And so right at the out, and that was the thing that took so much time. It was the, we started off calling them the not Halo principles. Mm. And, and actually it was Martin I dealt with most. He was like, three things, three things that you can never do. Right? You must never sell this. Right? That's what everyone is so upset about. Halo was great when it came in. Yes. And then they sold it. And he said, you can never sell this. And if you're investing money in something that you can't sell, well, that's like, okay, that's a bit of a different investment. Yeah, true. And then the other two things they said, which were, less complicated but they said you must never be able to increase commissions you can always decrease commissions but if you start off at 10 percent, you must never be able to increase commissions and then the third not halo principle was you must never ever do private hire so so that was the bit that took a long time how do you build those three golden rules the not halo principles yeah. into the company arcles in infrastructure before you're allowed to invest so that that was the the complicated bit from a kind of investment point of view so the the private hire aspect i have i have quite extreme views on the private hire <laughs> okay. uh, let's hear them well they're the contrary i i actually don't mind it i don't yeah. just have the private hire this is some sort of pride thing for me that we don't want the private hire on the same app but um seeing private hire on the same app doesn't bother me in the slightest as seeing it on a black cab but the black cab drivers don't completely agree with that they mm -hmm. they really want some form of separation as if we are drastic i think customers different. do as well dean i think customers would like the idea of just a black cab app mm -hmm. um, and i think that with the right backing it could work really nicely you know um and From, yeah, i mean we've had a bit of market research and that's actually a lot of our customers law black cab customers they don't Oil. want yeah well they don't want you know cars turning up um some other apps that's what they actually do you know if they can't get your black cab they'll yeah. just send you a car without even notifying you yeah i mean and that is and, true. And, and, and and you know customers have actually you know told us that in market research mm -hmm. so. I'm, I'm somewhere in between i think it's really when you start a business businesses are easy if you've just got one thing you do and yeah. doing just black cabs doesn't make the the marketing the business vision easier and and you're right at some point someone might say look actually it would be better and and the only way you could add private hire is if a majority of the voters agreed with you and said actually this is now the right time this is a good yes. idea so it's never never but the drivers would have to vote for it and you can't see that happening in the next no it, it's not happening they are very much black and white sometimes the drivers they are they, they have <laughs> yeah. an idea in their mind that isn't based on any real thought out principle it's more of a discriminatory thing i'm i, I don't like private hire and regardless of whether it benefits or whether we can see a way through it, I'm, I want nothing to do with it. Um, I do see and have from the very, very beginning that uh, the idea of Taxi App is absolutely the best in terms of driver owned, driver controlled. And I don't understand why every cab driver isn't on it to support it and grow it and help push it i don't understand that part yeah i've spent many nights thinking the same thing you know and it's not it's it, there isn't one simple solution i think many mm -hmm. different cab drivers have different um sort of different issues with why they ain't joining it but you know i think we're, there's a brand new sort of push now we've got new marketing um, cab drivers are going to see it we've recently relaunched the the app which is nice and smooth and working and stable so you know the the, the reasons the barriers for entry for drivers joining is actually you know coming down yeah and that's as i see as my role it, within it is to try to make it as uh, appealing as possible to get as many drivers on it because ultimately service is king yeah. on any app so we need to get as many drivers on as possible so is it free now not no sorry that's, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, right? <laughs> drop one there mate well you know they're, they're very clever with their marketing yeah. i mean you've actually you know is it free for drivers to use now well, we, what we did do a, a session of, of free, and at the moment it's actually it's been ten percent plus that. But we're also giving sort of five pounds. So every job that you do on tax app at the moment, you get you get a fiver on top of the fare. Oh, yeah. So we, we've got a, a big marketing push for customers. They, they, they're sort of getting vouchers, and so we've got lots of stuff in the pipeline. Obviously, it was when we transferred over to the new app. There's a bit of a, a sort of lag where we got to onboard all these drivers, get them all trained up, get them all ready. And then obviously now push for customers. How long has the new app been on the market? Uh, not long at all, a few weeks. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's interesting. When we, when we invested, we thought there were four big hurdles to making this work. The first one was finding a decent management team. You know, this mm -hmm. is not easy. People who can run and grow communities and tech businesses, 
uh, aren't you know they're very hard to find and expensive so the first key could we find a management team and and that kind of was the biggest hurdle and we yeah. found it we found the right people so we're super excited about that so you got a new yeah. team on board yeah, yeah, yeah new yeah. team yeah and then uh, so i was going to say there's a good blend i mean straight away when we spoke you know i stuck my hand up i mean i know my limitations and i think it's it's important you know you stick your hand up when you think well we need someone who actually has done this professionally yeah. and so very early on you know, that, that's what we agreed, and we've got a really good team now. And it's a good mix between cab drivers and professionals, and, and yeah, they're working really hard. And it's Can I get a bit of historical background? Were you involved from the very beginning, Phil? Yes. And were you involved because you knew how to make apps, or you just involved with the idea that I think we can do this? I've always been into technology, yep. all different kinds of technology, but the actual driving force for me was actually, I could see very early on um, that the cab trade needed its own, mm -hmm. because there are pitfalls of relying on, on other apps. Yes. You know, so, and that's what really drove me was that I knew that the, you know, the cab trade does need apps. If we all agree that apps are not going to disappear, then we should have a Well, they're own. not, are they? I mean, no, exactly. I, I now don't leave the restaurant without hailing the cab before I get up out of my seat. So that is going to become the norm for lots of people yeah. in lots of situations. So, yes, you need to actually. Exactly. So then the next question is do we need our own? You know, mm -hmm. what's the benefits of having our own? And not just that, I think apps going forward along the sort of tech road, you know, as a trade, we throw a lot of our data under the bus. Mm -hmm. You know, most cab drivers, so, so one of our problems at the moment is we don't have a lot of numbers of cab drivers coming through. So how can we actually use technology to improve our service level? Yeah. And by, by giving that data of which areas do you work most, where do you have less downtime, which ranks are busy, which stations, it improves traffic flow, it improves our own sort of, you know, our own efficiency. Yeah. And so that that's really what I want to push further down the field as well. So that yeah. will help with you know, numbers in our service. Who's working on the tech side now then? You have a new team that developing the app or? We've got a team, we, we use a company, another company that we've gone to. And so, yeah, they, they have their own sort of tech stack and team. <laughs> that was the, that was the interesting thing, you know, ride hailing apps are not new now. And there are, when we started doing the research, there are four big software houses that all do ride hailing apps. So, so the question was, could we choose the right partners? And, and whilst they're all rail, ride hailing apps, black cabs are absolutely unique. So we need to find the right development partner yep. who A, bought into the vision, so would invest a load of money with us and also had the ability to tailor it so that it was actually for black cabs. Yeah. So that that's, I mean, that, that's taken three months and quite a lot of sleepless nights. Oh, yeah. um, and that was brilliant when we worked out who the right partners were and they've been brilliant so far. Yeah. So I'd say just, you know, it's now launched and it's stable, but it's fantastically exciting. All the things that drivers have been screaming for, you know, how to get make more of tips. There's so many people out there who would love to tip more um, and, and you know, guarantee the cab is going to arrive yeah. and happy to throw 10, 20 pounds to make sure it does. So, so many good stuff, good, good things coming. Yeah. And it's quite a nice blend, a professional management team who can do product development with a bunch of founders, drivers there who can feed in from all the other drivers saying, this is the priority, this is what yeah. we need. So Exactly, because the, the passion on its own is not enough. You know, you need that drive and passion, but you need that professionalism. And that's the blend what I think we've achieved. And, and hopefully yeah. we'll, we'll see the results of that soon. Yeah. You know, so it's only cab driver out there, you know, it, it, jump on board. Yeah. So you are a cab driver. You've been yes. a cab driver for how many years? Ten years. Oh, you, so you really, you're almost a butter boy. Minus yes, three. Yeah. Not quite. <laughs> what's, yeah. a, um, what's a butter boy? I, well, we have a debate about this. This is a kind you of... You don't know um, that and you're yeah. investing in us? There is... Um, I'm not sure I want to know. Yeah. They, they argue about, well, for about... God knows how long. I think it's an old phrase that refers to the fact that you are just a boy. Generally, you would have to have your first license. This is a butter boy factory years. where you're sitting. Yep. It's a butter boy factory. Yeah. Yeah. It is a factory of butter, butter boys. boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, what's your background, Ben? Sorry. I was just going to ask that. Oh, um, you just beat me to it. Sorry, mate. Amazing. <laughs> I can answer you both at the same time. Yeah. Um, I was a, a lawyer in the city originally. And then um, when I was 30, so 20 plus years ago now, I started a childcare business. And um, it's tough. We used to run nurseries and lots of agencies. And we had a big idea in about 2003. We built this website called Emergency Childcare. Um, and the promise was to get you a nanny or a nursery anywhere in the country on a moment's notice. And it was a good time to be doing it. It was just when, you know, you could write software rather than giving people a disk. You could yeah. build a bunch of software. And we started selling that as a corporate service to large companies. So the yeah. Googles and Goldman Sachs and Barclays. So, so we still have the childcare business. Actually, it's called Mayahana. But the, the tech, we built a big tech business in the end. Yeah. Um, which we sold three or four years ago. Okay, and now you're wondering what to do next, and you've gone into this as being something to gamble on. You basically are, aren't you? You're... I'm, I'm not sure if it's a um, if it's a gamble. You know, when we looked at it, it's my 
it's my next door neighbour, um, my brother, my cousin who got together, and we're all big users of London Taxi. So yeah. it was um, the opportunity. I mean, go back to the start. If we can build something that which we've done that the drivers own and they feel like owners, it's going to be great for for everyone. And you know, even if it doesn't work, we will force the existing operators to be better and lower commissions. So we kind of thought, you know it's a it's a win-win we've got a chance to do something great yeah. and make london better yes yeah no, I, I, I like it because i think we got to a point where with the older model that with the, the the cooperative model it was starting to become repetitive yeah. it was starting to become we need more drivers we need more drivers and then we were losing drivers at the same time and i don't feel like we were getting anywhere with that we weren't pushing ourselves enough or I could say we were pushing ourselves a lot and we weren't getting in very far with that. And ride hailing businesses need need to be invested in. I mean, if mm-hmm. you look at any of the balance sheets of the other uh, competitors, they're all in a minus mm-hmm. because they're constantly pumping money in. How can we compete with that? How, how can, as a small group of drivers, how can we compete with that? We needed a partner, you know, that's my view. And I said when I came on board that I would support it whichever way it went, you know, I, I I was pragmatic. I wanted to know what both sides were. Um, but I was within, you know, I was thinking to myself, well, whoever goes to, you know, it's whatever was right for us at the time, right for the trade. You know, it's difficult. It's a very difficult junction. Well, you I know? think we've got that you came question ourselves. Yeah. I mean, the, the bits, you know, I said, it's like three hurdles. Could we find a management team? Could we make the tech great, which yeah. we're on with now? Yeah. Could we convince the drivers that they really are owners and it will be good? Well, we're idiots if we can't convince them because that bit is absolutely true. Yeah. But the key is, and this is, I throw this out there, the key, once the drivers really do realise they are owners and feel like owners, can you convince the punters to come on board? So, you know, when someone's in your cab and they book through Get or Free Now and you say, look, great, but I'd love you to use Taxi App next time because yes. I get more of the fare. See, and we that, was doing that, weren't we? We yeah. was converting the drivers over from the other apps, but then they were using the app and they were disappointed with the app because they weren't getting the driver. Exactly. So it was like you were filling the bath up yeah. without a plug hole. Churn. Yeah, but they're, they're churn. expecting churn. a plate. Churn. 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 The churn was too high. I think churn it's was the too high. plug yeah. you were missing, not the plug <laughs> hole. Plug <laughs> hole. This is why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you come on board. <laughs> but we yeah, needed you. Yeah, no. Um, but <laughs> yeah, the, the churn was high. Churn rate, yeah. And, and you know, the yeah. logical argument is yeah. if you keep trying to do something over a period of time and it doesn't work, then you need to stop and ask yourself, <laughs> something's not right. Yes. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, if you can't climb over the wall, then you need maybe I've got to get a ladder. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, um, and, and, you know, as, as, as brilliant as the idea was of the cooperative, it only got us to a certain junction. And then we had to decide whether, you know, it was time to carry on or or, yeah. or help or get help and do, do you think with the cooperative it was a case of too many cooks as well dipping their hand in and their opinions in and trying to oh, i want it to go this way you want it to go that way it's like any business you know you've got to, you've got to be you've got to have a board and you've got to make decisions and and if there's lots of people you've got to have a vote haven't you yes mm. but we making a that. decision amongst 10 people on a board is easier than making a decision amongst 1000 people who are all fighting <laughs> against their own yeah better interests very yeah, often yeah and they've got to make a decision what they what they see and hear from yeah you know i, th- I think obviously the, the team we've got now is really professional and they're, they're, they're very sort of strict in in how the rules are, are, are sort of dealt out and how we actually function as mm-hmm. a team and it's much more efficient and you can definitely see the difference but there's know? a profit to be made isn't it obviously because 100%. you're investing ben so do, you're doing for a profit and i think that idea wasn't there before mm-hmm. the, no. the idea of trying to make a profit wasn't there it wasn't a profit as a cooperative. It, it was just to try and reinvest everything. Yes, and it's it. no longer a corporate cooperative. Now. No, no, this this is a completely new venture. Is this basically a new company yes. under the? Oh, so okay. Yeah, absolutely new, uh, new company. Um, you know, slightly new team. What's the commission? Uh, it's ten percent plus that. Okay, and uh, any monthly fees or anything like that? No, now? that's it. That's it. And at the moment, like I said, we're, we're doing a promotion, which is five pound extra for every ride that you do. Right. So if yeah. every driver gets behind this, because I think the fees kind of was a good idea, but in the beginning, if you wanted people to get on it, you've kind of got to give away something for nothing. To yeah, well, as, as, a as a commission. Oh, yeah, I think if you'd have said to everybody, the app is free and we, the commission is this very small and enticement for, because you need every driver on it, because if Correct. you've got every driver on it, you're on the winner. Exactly. It's all uh, about service. Yes. It's all about service. And, and so that's where we're at now. At the moment, we're onboarding drivers. Uh, like I said, new apps out. You know, we're really going to push, you know, full marketing 
sort of team behind it now, mm-hmm. so you know, which we didn't have before, and that's and that's that rocket fuel. It's you know, if you don't have enough rocket fuel, you ain't going to get off. And, and so now we've got you know everything in place. We just need drivers to jump on board. Yeah, yeah it's, it's no so brainer. We've got to get drivers on there then. Yeah, how, and how are we going about? How, how are we? As if I'm a <laughs> shareholder now, major shareholder and investor. You carry on <laughs> asking nice questions, and you might be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <But> how are <laughs> we going to go about getting these drivers on there? Because. I honestly, not that I'm a great business mind, but when this first came out, this idea, I could see this is the way that it could work. But it, but cab drivers are sometimes a little bit short-sighted and want the quick fix, the quick money, the quick in. We were talking about this the other day. I can't remember what podcast it was, but we were talking about this the other day where they they turned it on and they're not getting the work and then so they turn it off again. Yes. So they're paying their £20 a month or whatever it was. They're, they're going, well, I'm not getting any work off of it. So then they pull out again. So mm-hmm. then you'll get driver three months, they pull out again. Can yeah. I run the taxi app at the same time as running my other apps? Yes. Good question. So same yeah. time I've got that on, so I can leave it on. I can background. keep me apps going so I can keep supporting taxi app and I can prioritize taxi app jobs when that comes in on my way and I, I do those jobs. And I can also, when people get in, you do need to be saying, you did call me through another app. Um, really, you should use this one. It's better for all of us. Uh, for using this one and certainly nobody likes giving away a percentage of their income um, so if we can give away less of our income credit card fees and commissions exactly it's and, and that's exactly what we're trying to achieve here and, and obviously with with credit card machines that may be something that we go into in the future if we can use our numbers um, to reduce that cost yeah you know and that's what taxi up if, if you look at the actual business model it's all based on reducing the cost of the driver you know the more work you do the more points you get, the more dividend you get, the less you've paid overall over a year. I think that's exactly the point. The fact that the drivers are the biggest shareholder, they own over 40% of it, if it does work and it's profitable, uh, you get the money back effectively. So so if we can convince drivers, if we get critical mass, then the commissions will be lower than everyone else because no one else will be able to compete because the drivers are owners this and no one else yes. is able to give drivers a huge chunk of the business. So, so, so basically what it is, it's, not, it's no longer a cooperative, it's now a partnership. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. the basics yeah. of it. It's the partnership with Ben's company, or Ben's Ben's investment, Ben's family's investment, neighbours' investment, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and and we're all partners, and we all want to make it better, cheaper, um, and fight in numbers. We've got yeah. num- we, we well, a just, number. We just want a number. Just for disclosure, against, though, against I, I am not a shareholder. No. So I have no reason to pitch you sort of pretty questions. I could tear into you if I yeah. wanted. <laughs> Once you download the app, you are a shareholder. Ah. Okay. Instantly. Are you okay? Well, I'll have that on my phone today. <laughs> I'll become a shareholder. But you know, I don't feel like there's any reason why drivers shouldn't give it a go now. Um, obviously, some drivers will have this history of how it started and things like that. And look, we all we're all got there our opinions on how things should begin and and, mm-hmm. and progress. But now they've got a chance to not have to pay subscription. Yep. Give it a go. Give it three to four months. And they've not lost anything by doing that. And it's taxi only. So we did taxi only, and your partner's in the business. And you got a veto. So you got your three major non-halo, yeah, sort of veto. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, aspects which are in aspects. stone, yes. which Ben wrote out because he's a lawyer. He's got them. <laughs> so they can't. I was be. not a very good lawyer, so we did. <laughs> we did. Um, I mean, the the lawyer we got to do it is a great guy. He's known as Ketley because very good at law. But he talks about the weather a lot. But other than that, he did a. Um, no, he's very good. No, he is. Yeah, okay. A lot, a lot of effort went into that. So you've got, this is all uh, set out, but we didn't cover, what's this controversy over the stealing of the app and what's these, what's, what is going on in the background with the people that are upset with you? Uh, in that, that regards, I mean, it, this is a completely new app. I mean, unfortunately, the, the cooperative model didn't, didn't work. Didn't work. Did and, you not think of completely rebranding then away from the name Taxi app rather than? It was considered. Yeah. It was considered, but we never felt that we needed to. Okay. I think it's a great name. It does what it says. Yeah. It is what it is. It's a, taxi it's, a be- app. it's a better name than any well, other uh, app company that, or that's ride exactly, app company. That's exactly what pushed me to take it. Because if someone comes to London and you know they want a taxi and they want an app, that's what they're going to write in their You're going to write taxi app, I know. Well, and, it, and it helps <laughs> the algorithm <laughs> that you yes. come up, you see. So, yeah. The customer I took on taxi app on Friday, last Friday, that's how they got the app. I said, did someone tell you about it? Did someone sell you no, to you in a cab? He was like, no, I just typed in taxi app on Google and it came up. Um, and I come from America and I, I, I like the idea of it being only taxis because I'm sick mm-hmm. of Uber and it's yeah. Americans are tourists. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it was good. It was yeah. So what you feel saying is absolutely right. 
not having private hire, it's not conclusively uh, not having it on the app. It's not a great, not conclusively f- mm. a benefit. Yeah. Um, they, I know why they're arguing against it. They probably got their timing right as well, in, in my opinion, because Who? it's free now. They oh. probably got their timing right to do what they've done because it's not really a secret that you can ghost app, get a ghost uh, hail from a, from, a, from a car. It's not exactly a secret. You can easily go on and find another app. So they've cornered a market where they can get everything on one app. Mm-hmm. And they've done it at a time when it was probably good timing. Mm-hmm. Whereas what I does think, Get do then? Huh? What does Get do? They do the same? Get more corporate, I think. Yeah. They do yeah. a lot more corporate work. Um, they get they got accounts with big city Okay, so they get stuff. basically to home Comcab and things like that, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, they do like the London Underground contract. Mm-hmm. And they one, have got... One Transport. One Transport, which is um, a private hire. Yeah. So they've got that. I mean, I think they just to be clear, you know, yeah. Get is a corporate one. So they, yeah. they, they are very expensive, but they spend a lot of their money looking after the big Googles and mm-hmm. Apples of this world. Um, and FreeNow, so Get is an Israeli technology company. FreeNow is owned by BMW and Daimler Daim- and took over, um, Mercedes took over Halo. But just to be clear, they're good apps. I mean, they've spent millions on these things. And what's lovely for us is the model being owned by the drivers is it's better for drivers yep. and we've got these great bits of tech out there to copy the best bits of and improve some bits where we see them so yeah. now that we've got a stable app it's brilliant we've got a better financial model for everyone and the ability to copy great bits of tech and you know just if we come up with something that is brilliant you bet your life free now will do the same thing why wouldn't yes. they yeah. so I, I think it's a lovely position we've got the the big bad boys to aim at who do a brilliant job for the customers a lot yes. of the time yeah well put and I, I, well, you know when you, you mentioned about the stealing of the app and stuff like that i completely understand where drivers are coming from where they feel a little bit uh un- undermined by what's happened mm-hmm. Um, but I think what we've got to do now is look forward yeah, and look at actually these guys have come on board and they really believe in us. These guys really believe in us and want us to get better and want us to go up against these other apps that you mentioned and and be better, yeah. you know, by not actually having to, you know, bring up, bring other companies in, in like private hire. Yeah. We can do it on our, on our own, yeah. well, with the- but with partnership because on our own was difficult because... You know, you, you, you've got so many different drivers' attitudes, yeah. whereas we need some help. We without need some the, without the fresh impetus that Ben and your neighbours are bringing, without this fresh drive, I think you would have finished. Yes. yes. So yeah. if I'm saying, if I've got the hump, then I've got the hump about the fact you didn't finish because that was the road you were that on. That was the ultimate end, without, correct. So you can't really moan. You've got to These say, guys were good tired. luck to this survival. They were tired. I could see it in their face. They were surprised. tired. They yeah. were tired. And there was a lot of people that... Wanted it to act to work, including me. I wanted it to cooperative to work, yeah. But it was tiring because you've got so many people with so many different opinions wanting to run the app, and it was, and it was yeah. just all cab drivers. You need it- some support from someone with investment, with professionalism, yeah. with a good background in business. You need that. It, it's Paul, that's going to be one of the. I mean, one of the challenges. You know, yeah. the great thing about London hackney carriage drivers is there's you know, you've all got opinions which yeah. is great in some ways and, <laughs> and not so but no but it's true so you've got this um you know so we've now got the management team running it but they will get it right if they listen to, to what most people think and manage to put what most people think into action mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but you know you have to w- work out how to filter that noise some ways and say you know some people might be screaming louder but actually the priority yes. is bigger tips yeah. For example, that's one of the things we're very excited about. But, but you know, you need to filter the noise in the right way so that we yes. make the right improvements. Yes, because uh, this is one of our complaints always. The loudest people in our industry are not the voice of all of us or not the voice of any majority. I feel a little bit buzzed for you because um, it, it seems you might have some impetus now to go forward. And, and certainly fresh ideas. Definitely. Fresh push. It's a fresh um, push, uh, new rocket fuel. Yes, you know, with a clear plan and objectives. Um, Has that fuel gone up though? That's the that's the that's the question. <laughs> every every yeah, other fuel's gone, gone up. up. <laughs> yeah, but, but, uh, and you sold me. I'm sold. I'm good. sold on Ben. <laughs> yeah, me yeah. too. And, but and you, the, you're you're right. In actual fact, this Thursday we um we've got a, the, the, lots of us having a marketing session. How do we spread this word? Yeah. And the truth is, is, we've got a marketing team now saying you do this and some people, some drivers will get a, an email saying this is how it is and they'll go, great. Some people will need a half hour one-to-one conversation. 
Yeah. So again, there's no magic bullet, but you need to put the time and effort to actually have these kind of conversations. So, you know, I, I, I looked at some of your YouTube clips, right? There's lots of, lots of listeners. Some will read it, some will mm. watch and some will be convinced. Other ones are going to need more time. But yeah. I, don't, I think the marketing to the, the drivers is nothing more than time and effort and patience. And the great thing is there's nothing to hide. You know, the more people yeah. find out what the structure is really like, I, you know, I, t- I had a uh, cabby the other day from Heathrow and he didn't believe me until we were in the 43rd minute of our 47 minute journey that it was like I was showing him the <laughs> documents and it was like and, um, yeah cab drivers are very very they, 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 it's, it's a difficult uh, market um, where's the trust con? where's the fix trust where's, Where, the... where's the catch because they've been had over quite a few times you get yeah. it I mean, there's been a lot of companies, ride apps. I mean, you can go back years and years and years. They don't. They never used to call them ride apps. They call them radios, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they got sold on and other businesses that are involved in the taxi trade got sold on and corporate people. But the, at the end of the day, we need support from business because mm-hmm. otherwise we can't operate. It's as simple as that. Yeah, We can't just go round and round in circles investing in ourselves as drivers. It just doesn't work. Yeah. You need outside the biggest for me, injections yeah it has to happen one of the biggest problems with the cab trade is it's fragmentation yeah, yeah. and everyone pushing in their own little you yeah, know, yeah we don't realize the potential and the strength if we just all get together. together again we've been pointing that you know, one out yeah and, that, and that's massive and it's it's not just with apps it's across the board oh well, yeah uh, with tfl with the knowledge with everything you know yeah. we really do need to sort of come together and it's um i compare it, i compare it a bit with my business like if i only had the cabs that i could afford to buy in buying cash i'd only have a handful of cabs but I need outside investment to grow that business. Otherwise, it's not going to grow and I can't supply my market. Yeah. It's the same with every business that's involved in this industry and any other industry, to be honest. You have to have investment. It's yeah. paramount. Otherwise, well, we're... But just, going to just quickly going from, back to, sorry, about sort of how to get on and, and stuff like that. We will yeah. be down the ranks yeah. over the next few weeks. Yeah. So you'll see our guys around, you know, in the stations doing sort of stickers or flip seats so you know it's it's just give them a quick shout and, and get on board so for me i need the key the key things which is it's a 10 percent commission plus vat correct it is uh, owned and you are a shareholder when you download the app and you work on it correct it's taxi only and no private hire on the app and what else am i going to do to tell these students that this is why I've, certainly the unity i think but is this is it the 10 percent the 10 no private hire no private hire uh, you get the veto obviously for commission so that doesn't go up so it's down to the drivers so oh commission can't co- go up co- commission can't go up unless all the drivers agree exactly Just, so, so you know the the exact structure there is there's 42 percent of the business in is in a is in a company owned by guarantee so when you download the app and your driver you become a shareholder in that company that owns 42 percent of it right and can't make any big changes private hire commission or sale of the business without that company limited by guarantee approving it. So so you've got one vote out of however many drivers download and use the app. Yep. So um, it's not like a 51-49% board meeting where you've got the 51% of the shares you can make the decisions. No. You, you can't need, make the decisions without the 42%. Without, without the 42% voting for it. Right. Yep. And they're big changes. Obviously, you're not going to go to for vetoes on little things like we need a new stapler. No, I know. I you mean, know. No, it's just those three things those, that yeah, the yeah. company limit of guarantee has got the absolute <clears throat> veto. Yes. On. They're not a vote veto. Mm. So now it comes down to the fact that you had problems with the app before in terms of functionality. Mm-hmm. And now you think you've achieved that, although maybe it's early days. Yeah, no, no. The, the app's performing really well. We're yep. quite, quite happy with where we are now. But obviously, it, 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 there's a tech roadmap that we want to improve. And like I said, about giving more data to drivers eventually to to be a better tool because really yeah. it's a tool isn't it it's a tool of your trade so yes we want that to improve well the more drivers that are on it the more risk of functionality failing i suppose no I, I, we don't we don't foresee any issues in, in sort of uh, scalability right no they're not at all actually i mean the, the guys doing it um called on day i mean we are one of 60 clients all doing ride hailing all over the world so and they've, we've had a, the right conversation with them where they are as excited as we are about this. So they've put a lot of resource behind it, but, yep. but they're the, the biggest of the ride hailing businesses out there. So it's a proper bit of, you know, none of this testing live data It's all beta testing and complete stability. And when you have issues, which, which will crop up with Stripe, for example, you've got big tech players dealing yep. with them for us. So, so uh, in terms of the drivers owning the 42%, you own the other 30, uh, 58? 
Yeah, it's a mixture of the founders, the investors, and the management team. Right. Got the rest. So you're a net. You're on yes, that side. Yeah. Field. Yeah, and he's in, on, he's yeah, in and both sides. Yeah, foot in both sides. Win-win. And how many people are in your position with a foot in both sides? There's four of us. Okay. So there's four founder members, and so we're on a sort of a part-time salary, but yep. obviously we're working full-time. Yeah. So hence, uh, yeah. Well, hopefully, how you can get a good salary because I think yeah. people deserve definitely for the amount of effort. Well, if they the grow, we grow. Things. If we yeah. grow, they grow. It's a, it, exactly. Yeah. It's like my business. Like if if I've got more cabs, that means that the business is doing well. Mm-hmm. If, if you're busy in, on the road, I'm busy at the garage, yeah, agency, garage, whatever you want to call it. So, so as, it's, as a, then, it's a partnership. It's always a partnership out there. Have you, we, have we you factored that part into your calculations, Ben, that the knowledge is kind of dwindled and under threat and therefore as we go down in driver's numbers... I mean, you had this conversation at the start. I mean, there's a real risk, isn't there? They're not going to be... I mean, London could cope with 5,000 more black cabs yes, at the moment. Um, I think so. And and that's one of the things that we are excited about. If you've got a, a, a an app and a community that really does speak better than anyone else for the for the, the drivers, you've got a chance then to go to Sadiq Khan or whoever else and say, look, look after us properly. Yeah. You know, I mean, there are far less roads now that you know, it used to be much quicker taking a black cab anywhere. And now you've got to be going in the right place to take yeah. advantage of those. And you know, you'd love more of that rather than less. Yes. But you need to speak with one voice for that. And and you need someone who can speak with a proper voice, yeah. <laughs> an articulate voice. Well, exactly. It's, it's yeah. It's um, the right um, pushiness and eloquence without being too yes. shouty, isn't it? The taxi trade's a serious business. You know, it's a serious player in the transport business of London. Mm-hmm. It's, it's 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 a massive fabric of of this city. Yeah. You know, and um, having our own app, I think, is powerful. Yeah. It's powerful. You know, and it it's, it's and, and 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 we all we should all get behind it, whichever way it turns, just to keep it going. And then go from there. I mean, I know there's people that are bang against what's the, the changes that have happened, but I hope that they can look forward now. And Maybe see, a bit look, of jealousy let's there. Give it a go. Are they people that were involved? I don't know about don't... that, and I don't want to say that because I don't think that's right. I think they're they're uh, they're passionate. They're passionate. We're all passionate about this trade, you know. Me and Phil, you, Ben's now involved. We saw Trevor here earlier. Massive passion for the trade. But we've just got to be channeled in the right way, you know. Mm-hmm. Having to pop at each other is never going to achieve yeah. anything. No, but the pop at each other is never only, going to achieve it's anything. only ever done in the same way as road rage, where they're doing it from behind their windscreens. Because nearly Eagles. every person that we shout at when we're in road rage is someone that you'd be drinking in the pub with, chatting quite nicely with. We, we're actually just fighting with ourselves. So a lot of cab yeah. drivers in this industry are quite extreme on their Twitter views and Facebook views. Yeah. But if they came and sat around the table, suddenly they start coming out with something intellectual uh, yeah. because they're having the debate. That's it's right. It's very easy for people to throw mud when you're, uh, <laughs> well, we spoke about Twitter earlier. I mean, it's, yeah. it's just, I, we should just all avoid Twitter completely. It's, it's just a load of rubbish. If, if drivers can understand, if we have a successful app, the more successful we are, the bigger that voice becomes. Yes. Yeah. And if you're a, a black cab only app, it's, it's, it's obvious you know which corner we're, we're obviously going to be fighting for yeah so, so we're going to have to make it a successful app you're going to start doing more promotional work uh, i am going to work from the ground up i am going to you. be telling people every driver and all the ones that have just recently passed that please try the taxi app get on it stay on it work with it it costs you nothing to to work with it but we can build this up slowly slowly and we're always sitting there in the background creeping into the market share um, sure. And the benefits are immense mm. because we are um, exclusive. We are the market. So if you come to London and you want a black cab, why, why shouldn't we just have one app that deals with us and we, aren't, we won't need any other apps. If you want a black cab, you download Taxi App. That's how you get them. Sure. Mm-hmm. That's that would the be, I mean, some cities do have just one great local taxi app. I don't think that's ever realistic here because they're existing players. But mm-hmm. yeah. you're right. The other thing I'd say is just patience. You know, we've now built it and it's stable but there are so many improvements coming so yeah. so you're right just download it but just give us three four six so months to make it chicken, as good as chicken it, and egg yeah. sort of scenario with, with, with apps and stuff but uh, we are working flat out i can yeah. promise you that well what's your projection ben on trying to get your money back <laughs> i mean there's no um i mean the key is the key is how many drivers are on board and pushing it to there so you know i don't remember when we did it the um there's, you know, you always when you build a business plan, there's always best case, medium case, and worst case. Um, I, I, th- I think it's a little bit binary. You know, we've done the two bits, but there, if we get drivers on board, it'll happen very quickly. Right? Mm-hmm. So, 
So I, I think in the next year we will, the next six months probably, yeah. we'll know if it's working brilliantly. Okay. So it is. It's a little bit. It's got to work fairly soon. Can I have an idea of what the speculative target is to how many drivers you need to get on board by within the next six months? I mean, it's what you said at the start. I think it's the better model. So there are, you know, seventeen or 20,000 black cab drivers, depending on how you count it, of whom probably 10, 12,000 use apps. Um, I, I don't see why we shouldn't have 90% of them because it's because they own it. So yeah. They um, own it and, and they're on an app already. Um, yeah. So they've been sold the... The, the idea of being on an app, they've, they've bought into that. They know that their customer wants a good service, i.e. when they're good, they want the, the door, door, door-to-door service rather than going out in the street and hailing. So why shouldn't they give this a go? There's no reason why they shouldn't give this a, give this a go and buy into what these guys are really trying their best to do. And they've gone through a lot of, some of these guys have gone through a lot of pain to get to this point. Now, if you want more information, head to our website. Yep. You know, uh, I'll put that on the podcast, the brilliant. website. And, um, and yeah, jump on board. Let, let, let's, let's push this.